Hi, and thank you for joining us on another segment of New England Veterans Liberty House uh, Veterans Corner. I have a special guest with me today, and I, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, he decided to bless us with his presence here in the studio today. <laughs> One of the reasons why I want to do this show is that, I, um, yes, it's a, it's a New England Veterans Liberty House segment. It's about you know what's coming down the pipeline for our veterans, uh, what kind of services we have out there that's going to benefit our veterans. But at the same token, this year, uh, with all the elections and all the hoopla that's happening around uh, in the media and uh, about diversity and segregations and whites and black and Hispanics and young, you name it. So I wanted to seek out, because a lot of the things that we have a problem is that we're not giving these millennials, as you all, many of you all say, uh, that they're not contributing to society. And that might be true for a handful, but that's not true for the other many that are out there. And that's what I wanted to expose. And so today our guest is Mr. Victor Martinez. Thank you very much, sir. For Thank you for having for me. For our launch. It is a privilege and it's an honor a, to have you here, buddy. It's a pleasure to be here, man. It really is. Uh, since the first day I met you, and I met you in Senator Barbara Italian's um, campaign office in Lawrence. Right. I knew right there and then that there is a definitely motivated and energetic young man that's going to go far. So I really do believe that you're destined for greatness. Kiddo. You really are. Thank you. You do a lot of good stuff. So Thank tell you. me a little bit about yourself before I start getting into sure. your bio and very, very impressive uh, resume. Uh, just tell us <laughs> a little bit about yourself, about sure. Victor Martinez. Where Victor. where did you come? When did you get here? Yeah. yeah. What did you do in the school system? So um, uh, it's interesting. I was just thinking about this not too long ago. I'm writing a book. Um, you are. Yeah. I heard that on the... Uh, well, I didn't hear it. Excuse me. Through the I wire. Seen through it the wire. On Facebook. <laughs> no, and what, ca what, what caught me yeah. to respond to that right. was because, um, like always in this world, there's always naysayers, and it's sad, but you're always going to have them. Yeah. And I think I just wanted to send you um, a little bit of a morale boost, and I think yeah. that's why I engaged in it. Yeah, but, believe it or yeah. not. Yeah, so uh, so been reflecting a lot of my life and stuff like that. How old are you? You don't mind me asking you. 30. So. 30 years old. Yeah, and uh, so as I was reflecting, I was thinking about my past and thinking about my humble beginnings. Yeah. Uh, came to the United States when I was seven. Good about to go from where? Uh, Dominican Republic. Okay. So Mom? my family's from... Uh, Who brought you over? My dad did. Don't. My dad did. So the, the story gets a little bit complicated, I think, with Don't immigrants. Don't need to get too deep here. Yeah, I think with the immigrant story, you know, <laughs> you happen to, to, to come with a family member that mm -hmm. can bring you, and then sure. you move around a little bit until Absolutely. things you settle, settle down a little yeah. bit. So. Yeah. But yeah, so I've been here for, for about 27 years now uh, yeah. in the city of Lawrence, and I've been able to actually move around because of schooling and education. Whereabouts? Uh, so I actually moved to Florida um, when I was about 10 or 11. Okay. I lived in Orlando. I lived with my grandfather and my okay. grandmother, um, and I really enjoyed uh, living with them out there. Come yeah. on, man. It's, it's warm, brother. <laughs> it's warm out there. You're not uh, breaking out no shovels. Yeah, <laughs> not breaking out shovels <laughs> no, and no ice, no melt. mittens and nope. yep, that's no it. black ice, no nothing. That's brother. it. That's probably your attire for the whole yeah, year. Yeah, man, bohemian, yeah. just yeah. the bohemian style. So <laughs> I get you. Um, so yeah, so you know, stayed out there for a little bit, then came okay. back here. Um, what you do over there? What was your parents doing over there? So my my grandfather, he very humble man. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a, he was are. a dishwasher man, and, they all are. and my Hardcore my grandmother, though. you know, she was a janitor and. Um, but their working ethics back yeah. then were so incredible. Absolutely. I mean, we still we still have a lot of young men and older older yeah. individuals working, but the uh, working ethics from from that era, right, is just surpasses up by, I mean, a hundred percent. I mean, they they're just always working. So I, I admire and respect that. And it's interesting because I grew up around a lot of adults. Yeah. And so for me, I, I as a child, you're observing. you're a bunch and you're observing. You're observing. Yeah. And it's interesting. A lot of people ask me like, dude. Do you ever sleep? What's going on? Like, yeah, is there a rest for you? And I'm got like, time for that right now. Who's yeah. got time? For exactly. There's <laughs> not enough time in the day. Man. Come on. Oh, uh, you got to live your life. You know, you, you only have 24 hours in a day, and you, you see do. that there are certain people who yeah. are successful and certain people yeah. are not. Yeah. And you always just got to look at the way they spend their time. Exactly. And so I recognize that. And so um, I'm ethics involved. Is huge. I'm involved. It's a huge thing. Where did you go to school? Where did you go to your uh, elementary to high yeah, school? Yeah, yeah. So you I. Go Around here, actually, not too far from here. I went okay. to um, the Arlington School. Okay. The Arlington I, I School. I went to the uh, Leonard School. Okay. Arlington. Leonard. Yeah. 
So yeah, so I went to the Arlington. I enjoyed my time there. Um, I met a lot of good friends there. I also got in a lot of trouble there. <laughs> you sure did. It's okay, listen. We all have skeletons in our closets. You know, your kid, your kid. You know? Hey, listen, that, you tell me, if you tell me <laughs> 25 years ago that I would be, um, I would be helping the community, uh, doing a TV show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, having, you know, my business and my, my uh, nonprofit, yeah. I would have told you not to bet on it yeah, <laughs> because, you know, the things that you do, believe me, you know, and now I'm doing all the stuff for the community. And it's so funny because 25 years ago, I keep saying a few friends of mine, which they don't want to come clean for four reasons, <laughs> but, but that's okay. Um, we broke a lot of windows around here, and here we are, hey. 25, 30 years later, um, trying to do something to yeah, fix those windows yeah, that yeah, we broke. Yeah, See how yeah, it's the evolution of life, how it goes. So Trying to decrease yeah. that broken window. That's effect. all, man. It's okay. Hey, you know what? You're you curious. Look. You got a lot of energy. That's had a it. lot of time in your hands. There exactly. were a lot of abandoned exactly. buildings in this area. <laughs> there so, was. Hey, yeah, you there know was. what? We're getting better at it. Though. I know. I know. Yeah. We certainly are. So I went to the Arlington, and I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of great teachers there. A lot of mentors. Uh, I was, you know, playing basketball and doing all kinds of things. And, and, and I really appreciated the fact that I had, it was Mrs. Robbins. Uh, I remember her um, and Ms. Uh, Fitzpatrick. And they helped me out tremendously. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a very troubled There's life. Some, um, I had a very troubled life. And, but they took me in. And, yeah. and they used sports well, as an opportunity for me to, to really I mean, uh, grow. The echo on that is, is um, people don't understand, man. But hey, I think, first of all, our educators are, are totally underpaid. Um, oh, that's my God. one. But let's just take that out of the equation for a second. These are the people that generally care for the well-being of others. A lot of them do. Absolutely. And they take their job to that extra level, which is mentoring you outside hours of what their scope of work is, to be honest. And there's a lot of teachers that are that are doing that. So yeah. kudos to all those that are educators and keep up the great job. Absolutely. And I want to echo that because I have many of my friends who yeah. actually are Our educators, educators and yeah. highly involved. Uh, Quinn yeah. Gunnell, Hineda Tapia, and... Many others who've now okay. moved on, but um, yeah, educators. I mean, if it weren't for educators, I don't know where I would be. And like you said, they're underpaid. Yeah, and huge, I feel like huge. they're undervalued. But and they these still are, stick around, man. So you know yeah. they're not sticking around for the money. It's not for the money. You know it's I mean? definitely not for the money. Yeah. It's more of a mission. Able to see a young guy like yourself yeah. come into their classroom, and whether you could see him, you know, from a little seed, and then end up, you know, flourishing, and then growing to be this beautiful flower. I mean, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, Thank and you that for calling me a beautiful flower. I appreciate it. <laughs> <That's> okay, <yeah. laughs> well, am I a tulip? Am I a sunflower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, that's a good one. That's a good comeback, though. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, just moral of the story is that there's a lot of, um, again, I know that there's a lot of issues with the educational system right. and stuff, and we still have to take, take a step back and also realize that there's a lot of, individuals out there that are doing this job on a daily basis not because uh they're getting rich off it but that's for sure because they truly love what they're doing yeah. and i think that education and i keep telling every kid out there man that the only way out of poverty in this country is with a great education you got it and there's a lot of good teachers out there that make sure that you guys are, you are got getting, it. i unfortunately wasn't one of those kids but you could see even back then when I was growing up, man, we had, uh, you know, Mrs. Grella. I would never forget her, man. She's a fifth grade teacher, man. Right after school, she'd, you know, she'd bang you up a little bit because you did something wrong, but then she'll break out the chocolate chip cookies and break out the books. You know, she used to really right. go that extra mile when she really didn't have to, right? Come 8 o'clock, you're teaching. Come 3 o'clock, boom, punch out, get out. And some of these teachers are not like that. But anyway, just continue on. So you went to Arlington School. Yeah. Where did uh, you go to middle school? Uh, Arlington, all uh, gra yeah. uh, grammar, middle. Well, I went to the middle. tar box. Tar box, okay. Tar box. Um, <laughs> a lot of people call it the poor box. <laughs> Not exactly it's sure why, why? but. It's a, where, uh, where's the tar box located at? Uh, so that's right off of Juniper Street. Um, near, uh, I'm geographically challenged. Uh, it's not too far from the Arlington. North. Okay, so that's north. Yeah. That's the north side. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's kind of on the back end of Park Street. <laughs> so they right used to call there. it what now? The poor box. Okay. Uh, but that was the actual name. That was school. the actual name. But, you know, there was a teacher there. Her name was Ms. Nieves. I mean, she was beautiful, gorgeous. She was about like 4'11", but she was tough. Tough Actually, as nails, man. Good. And that's when I first came to the United States, um, when I first met her. Good. And uh, she was tough. I would go home and I would complain all the time <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> to my mom and my aunt, and she would like. And so they liked her because hey, she was stern. She put me in my, you know, she, she put stern. me in my place. She was stern, yeah. and I needed that. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, well, especially was your mom raising the only, you, the only boy, or she had no, other no, no. Boys. I'm, I'm actually the oldest. Uh, okay. okay, so, so, so we got a couple, she, she had boys. yeah, okay. a couple other boys. You know, you have two brothers. 
Two you, younger brothers, and, and then in total through marriage and all that, it's about 12. So it's a big 12 family. Kids. It's a, it's a many, lot of kids. How many boys and girls? Uh, we got two two girls and and the rest of boys, man. Wow. So, yeah, it's quite okay. intense. It's I'm quite sure intense. It family gatherings yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but I'm sure, I'm sure your sisters love it, man, having yeah. all those boys defending uh, her. Yeah, and, you know, I mean? you know, daddy's little princess. So, it's it. you know, it's they, it. get, they get all the... The rewards and they yeah. get all the gifts. I don't tell stuff. you what I got. I was the only boy in the house, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got treated too nice yeah. for my dad. My dad wouldn't even let me throw the garbage away. Sometimes he'd be like, "Come on, you girls." I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> "Talk about keeping women barefooted and pregnant back in the day." For Just real. to go show you back now, you know, yeah. my daughter. It's like my daughter's in the house. I'll take, you know, it's it, it, it was that machista. Yeah, thing, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, dad, yeah, yeah. Obviously, thank God the world's changing and, and people are falling into soup. But that's the tough one. Would you go to high school? Uh, so, well, Miss Nieves was awesome because she, she inspired me to really, you know, have a love for, for, for reading. No kidding. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And so that was key for me. And that really set me on track to do well academically uh, when I was at, at the Arlington. And when I was at the Arlington, I started going to the Boys and Girls Club. And Good. one of the things that Good they emphasized was, yeah, excellent organization, Steve Great Kelly organization. and some of the folks yep. there, you know, um, they've Robinson, done a, little, a lot for this have done a lot for this community, have really inspired yep. uh, generations on generations to, to really aspire for greater things. Absolutely. So, um, I agree. So, so yeah, so I went to the club and, and they were, they kept on emphasizing, hey, education is important, you know, just take it, it out of here. It's, yeah. it's a way to go, you know, contribute and, and, and earn you know, yeah, a good 20, living. 20000 yeah, 30000 yeah. more a year. Absolutely. You know, would you agree? So it got me on track to apply for schools. Um, and so I applied to a couple of schools, uh, private schools around the area. Um, and so I went to Central Catholic. Okay. Yeah. Good school. I, yeah. Good school. Yeah. Um, I was privileged enough to, to be able to be on scholarship, but also um, to be able to pay my way through, too. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I started yeah. working Hold really young. I, yeah. yeah, I had to. I had, wrong to. With that, man. I had to help. I had to help all my mom. How was young did you go out there and start um, participating or helping with the? Uh, I started really young because I, I was a paper boy, man. I was, it was like you know, so 10, 10, 11 years old, so and, and, and and so I started. I was a paper boy. Lawrence Tribune. You know it, baby. Yeah. I and had, so at some had point, the Brook, Brook Street uh, route. So I had Willow Street. Yeah. I had. Um, Exchange yeah. Street and Saratoga yeah, you know Blues. That, I, that was awesome those yeah. days back then because you had young kids like us, you know what I mean, at that time, uh, were able to at least have 20, 25 bucks in their pocket. Yeah. And, we, for, and for me, that was that was huge. You well, know, back so. in the day, man, if you had money, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah, you big, were big the main dude in the yeah. corner in the street. You know, you were you yeah. main dude in the block. True, true, hey, true. Because here's the thing. It's like yeah, yeah. you couldn't afford a car, but you could afford a bike. And so if you had a bike, man, you had your status just yeah, went yeah. up just a whole elevated. another notch. Just elevated. And so Plus you have some spending money for some, you know, snow cones oh, and you know, you know, yeah, the yeah, ice cream truck I would can't pass forget by. Forget about those. The ice cream truck <laughs> would pass by, so you know. Um, <laughs> All right, so you went there, went off. So where, what college did you decide to go? Uh, so I went to, well, I was at Central Catholic for a little bit, but um, even though I went to Central, I felt like um, I wasn't really prepared for college, and so why is that? Um, I think that is it uh, something that you missed along the way because you know I mean kids sometimes uh, you know get to certain classes and whatnot and yeah. not tend to grasp whatever the curriculum is and then they'll pass them and next you know right. the worst thing you could do is pass a kid when he's like D minus or C minus right. and move him on because there's something in that area that he missed that he didn't understand or yeah. he or she didn't understand very well and now you're passing up and I think that's what happened to me right. many times. So what happened to you? Well, I mean, for me it was more again. Um, up growing up was tough. Um, very unstable home, and um, there were a lot going on at home. So it was difficult for me to focus. Mm -hmm. There was a lot going on. So I, that was my difficulty, and so I felt like I wasn't really fully prepared to go because I, had, I was always protecting my mom from what was going on at gotcha. home. And so well, being the oldest, you know, yeah. a lot of responsibilities, you know, yeah, yeah. being and the only male in my home, I, I ended up being more of a security yeah. guard. Then. Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I was flipping burgers at Wendy's, man. So yeah. as soon as I got out of school, got out of track practice, I immediately, you know, either took a bus or pay for a cab. And I was working late nights and, you know, yeah. trying to stay awake during That's what you have to do, right, days, to, 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 to be able to participate and help out with the cause or the daily essential needs. Absolutely. Else. What gets me is that these days, yeah. you tell a 14-year-old to go work, yeah. and they're going to look at you like you had six heads. Oh, like, absolutely. I have I, <laughs> my young ones, I'm like, come on, let's go w w work. What, what's that? I mean, 
work. Just go and maybe, you know, stuff some bags or, you know, stock some shelves. Nothing, there's nothing demeaning about that. It's just learning the value of a dollar. So I can't understand yeah. <laughs> that thought process now with the way, you know, I know the way I was raised, part of how you were raised, right? That you had to at least carry your own weight at the time, right? Because it is a struggling city. Absolutely. You know, and every penny coming into the home matters. So that's what gets me. But please keep on, because we're going to start talking. No, no, about no. That. I mean, that would you, you bring up some great points. <laughs> and so you know, it's funny, right? So I always tell the story that the reason why I started work, I, I wanted to work, and I would always ask my mom for money, and she's like, "Oh, you want money? <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. We'll get you I some. Can, I can hear it coming. We'll right get now. you some real money." So it was uh, back in the day, you could actually get a work permit to start working a little bit. Early. Sixteen, I think. 15, 15. 15, 16, Yeah. So July fourth, July four, baby. And so um, you, you're July 4th, July baby, 4th baby, baby. Nice. yeah. Okay, yeah. good to go. That means yeah. a lot. Means yeah. Like, now I know why you're so patriotic. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Absolutely. So come uh, my 15th birthday, wake up that morning and, uh, you know, we never did anything big for my birthday. And so my mom ends up uh, waking me up and she says, hey, you know what? Let's take you out to eat somewhere. I'm like, where, where? She's like, where, where are we going? She's like, your favorite place, Wendy's. Let's go to Wendy's. Nice. I'm like, yeah, I'll get my Frosty. You How know? easy, right? We were easy. <laughs> Junior we Bacon. Were, we were easy. Hey, way back in the day, Junior Bacon was like a dollar. We were easy. Now Listen, it's 135. It's real simple. You take me to Wendy's, McDonald's. I love you. I yep. love you for the rest of the week. <laughs> I don't forget about the movies and the Toys R Us. Yeah. Yeah. So she takes me to uh, to Wendy's, man. And we pull in the driveway. I, you know, get out the car. And I'm walking to to the door, and all of a sudden. I look back and my mom is not there. She's still in the car. She backs up, puts the window down. <laughs> See you later. Hey, when I come back, you better have a job. Nice. So um, that I love her already. Yeah, I love her yeah. already. Uh, she just she didn't even tell you what no, it was about. No, nope. I'm just dropping you off and you figure it out. You when figure you get it there. out, brother. You figure it Good out. Good for you, mom. Yeah. Good so, for you. I so, wish we could have more moms like that. Just like so, put them yeah. in the car, drop them off. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> That definitely taught me a great lesson. I started working there, and it was great. And so, uh, um, that's too good. So that's where I learned, you know, about work ethic work and ethics. giving back and contributing to the family. I, I was working really hard late nights, um, and I, for your stuff was, for your degree. Yeah, well, you know, to con yeah to help, you know, because back then, you know, we paid like two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars is a lot of money. A lot of money. Still is a it's lot still of money. A lot of money. Yeah. Still a lot of it's money a lot of in order for you to get yeah. some private education. Yeah, and some good quality education. Yeah, and so I started reflecting, and I said, you know what, you know. Um, I actually uh, wanted to get out of Lawrence, and I said, but before why, I do that. Why did you, why did you feel you think you had the need to Well, this is Lawrence. full disclosure. I really haven't shared this with many people. Um, I was actually uh, wrong place, wrong time. I was arrested okay. um, my, sure. my junior year. And junior year of high school? Junior year of high school. Okay, were you still a, were you still a juvenile back then? Yeah, and so um, they let me out on personal recognizance. Yep. But I was in that cell, and I'm like, here I am. I'm a part of the National Honor Society. I'm a junior Olympian, Reflecting. ranked in the country. Um, I'm doing the right things. And you thought you were. I thought I was, right? Yeah. But I, at that point, you know, I was just hanging out, not really doing much. Really wasn't in trouble. And, and just, I mean that. Just taking up air. Well, I was going to Big and Beefy, man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Prices of the consequences of eating fast food. That's what um, and on the way back, something had happened, and I was the only one in the scene. After everybody scattered, I was a good kid. I was like, hey, I'm, I don't have it. There's nothing on me. Nothing I'm good. Hide. Yeah. Anyhow, long story short, I'm here and I start thinking about my life and I say, I got to get out of Lawrence. Yeah. If I stay here, you might go down the wrong path. Something bad, even if I'm not looking for it, it's going to find me. What did and you so decide to do? I decided that I was going to apply to prep school, so I applied to Phillips Academy. Good. And so clearly I was a good enough student, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you had the credentials. The credentials academically, yep. but also athletically, and then people knew me pretty well. and. And so I went to Phillips Academy for mm -hmm. a year, and that was a phenomenal year. Was it? An amazing year. Why a year? So it's called a postgraduate year. Okay. And so really what that year does is sort of that year to molds you mold, someone. refine, really uh, work on... Your thought processes. Yeah, what yeah, you're thinking. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And think through, really think through about what is it that you want from life? You yeah. know, do you so that year in the Phillips Academy did it for you? Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. So you, do you think if you would have gone to that year, that then you would be here with the same story? Or do you think you would lead no. to a different path? I mean, I think I would be in a different path okay. um, because when I got there, what I realized is the standards, man. The standards are so much higher. 
And what I realized while I was there mm -hmm. too is that, I mean, I went to school with kids whose parents were congressmen and multi senators, multimillionaires, and Mark Zuckerberg went there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guy, Dan Brown, who wrote The Da Vinci Code, was yeah. literally a writer in residence when I was there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And okay. so as I'm thinking about all this stuff and I, and, I, and I was there, I just saw the whole world right Different. Right Different before eyes. me. Right Different before eyes. me. Right Let me just me. interject real quick because I know that they're going to give us a flashing sure. moment here. And usually when we start talking, have a good conversation, time just it, it goes, goes like that. So just to give yeah. you a heads up. Uh, to, as, as what the Phillips Academy did for you, yeah. the Marine Corps did for me. Mm. You know, I was the same situation. You know, I was a kid that was. Uh, you know, in and out of trouble. I'm not ashamed of it, you know, because what I, what I did then doesn't reflect the kind of man I am today. Right. right? It helped me along the way to probably, you know, take a look at life a little different, but I was the same. If I don't leave now, like right now, yeah. I, I don't know what's going to happen. So that I had to throw in there because the Phillips Academy did for you um, when it's done for you now, the Marine Corps. So, so in, a, in a strange way, we have Mirror like lives. the, yeah, because, yeah. right, we get into a point in and out, you know, juvie and doing all the kinds of stuff, gang, you know, affiliations, doing stealing cars and, you know, into pharmaceuticals and all that other good stuff. And then you like come to a halt and you're like, you see yourself like, okay, there's only two options right now. Right. I don't see anything past that. Right. When you don't see more than just two options, you know, and you don't really yeah. have that, you know, long, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary and it makes you think, right. you know, if, if I stick doing this, where am I going? Yeah. So good for you for taking and acknowledging that. And because, because of that acknowledgement, you're here today. Yeah, absolutely. I really do. And I'm grateful. I'm glad I had a lot of mentors who supported me. And they saw more of me than I, I could see myself. And that says a lot about my story today. Um, I felt that I was um, unknowingly a victim to my circumstances product of your product environment. my environment yeah. not being aware yeah. of what that even meant yeah exactly. and so then i really started understanding that i was operating from that perspective and that's the yeah. way that i was carrying myself yeah me too and i was like no way am i going to be a product of oh not at all not at you all I mean? and so that had an awakening i had an epiphany and then i said hey my name is victor for a reason and i gotta overcome all these hurdles in my life for a reason yeah and so i really bought into that story and that idea Good. and luckily um uh, you know, it's worked for me. It's Good for you. For me. What what has what has um, what has kept you motivated and inspired in, in a manner that you uh, I mean, what you reflect and what you put out, uh, um, Victor. And this is not blowing smoke. It's just based on my observation, and I'd love to observe. I'm pretty good at reconnaissance. And what I've observed for you is is is, is everything. It's always something, either has what I've noticed from observing the stuff that you see on Facebook when we talked is that you're not content as to where you're at. Right. You're always looking for that um, better opportunity or, you know, that, that, that knowledge that you want to uh, gain, but you can't, but, but you find it. You're, you're not, you're not content. You're not content where you're at. You won't always want better. Right. And for a person that has that energy and that drive and those leadership capabilities, um, it's after a while it gets contagious and people around you, you know, I, I keep saying that the energy you surround yourself with is the energy you will become. Right. Right. And so what I see to you is like, okay, here's a young kid when there's a lot of kids here in the city of Lawrence that are always whining about something. Oh, there's not enough opportunities for young kids. There's, you know, they're, they're thinking more about the elders. Right. Seniors, well, first and foremost, my opinion is our responsibility to take care of our seniors. Absolutely. I don't care how you slice it, anywhere you're out there, it is our obligation and our yeah. duty uh, to take care of our seniors. But a lot of the young kids around here where they say, which I believe that haven't contributed anything to society, are the ones that are saying that there's not opportunities out there. Please tell me what do you think of some of those comments and why are you not the statistic? Why are you not part of the, that group that says there's nothing here for us young individuals, so let me just move to another state or let me yeah. move. Tell me why is that, that's not Victor. Why, why Victor is where Victor's at today? Uh, real simple. Um, I walked into a bookstore um, when I was working in corporate America. I used to work in corporate America. Three minutes, gotcha. So I used to work for Corporate America, and I was working Huntington Ave. Uh, CSN is now called Wayfair. I was an institutional contractor. 
And I walk into a bookstore and this book, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership of John Maxwell. I never really had a father figure or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for mentorship. Picked up this book and started reading. One of the things that really caught me was, in order for you to really succeed in life, you have to have a vision. Sure. And the only thing that really- well, it's important part of that vision though, it's execution that vision. Absolutely. Yeah, because a lot of people, plan. yeah, you could have a have vision, but if you don't execute on that vision, that's all it is, a vision. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I kept on traveling back between Boston and Lawrence, and what I saw when I was traveling back was there's a, a, a leadership uh, gap Huge. And, and, and brain drain. And so what I said, one day I'm gonna return back to my city and I'm gonna rise up as uh, a leader that will inspire other people to see beyond the limitations. Good. And so I, I wrote that vision out and I made it very clear and I, and I stuck to it. And yeah, you wrote it out on paper. That's my goal, right? Let yeah. me leave you with this because we have a short segment here, sure. but we're going to come back for a second segment. And I always say that um, to become a good leader, sometimes you have to be a follower, right? Right. I followed, right? I followed until I got to a point where I knew that my managerial skills or my leadership capabilities needed to shine. Right. So that's when I took that extra step and did whatever, right? So, and as leaders, which many other leaders I think fear, and we shouldn't, is the fear of creating other leaders. That should be our job. Right? Yeah. We're leaders. I'm okay and I'm confident with yeah. what I do and I'm confident as to my execution and, and you know what I need to do to execute whatever missions. But, but I also, it'll be a disservice to anyone around me that I don't teach them everything I possibly know. Right. My kids including at that because I think it's a disservice, right? We need as leaders to create other leaders and don't be afraid to share your knowledge. With that said, listen, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a, a, a quick break. We'll be back for a segment two with Mr. Victor Martinez. We're gonna ask him uh, about Dream Network. Uh, so stay with us and like I always say, go out there and make a difference in someone's life today. <laughs>